Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All set. Set down here. Okay. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the January 14th Planning Commission meeting in Yellow Springs. Uh, I call to meeting the order. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Indeed. Doden. Here. McQueen. Here. Williams. Here. Pallotta. Here. Dinell. Here. Also present is um, Planning and Zoning Administrator Denise Swinger and Village Solicitor Chris Connard. We also have um, Public Works Director Johnny Burns. Thank you. Uh, all right, uh, first item on the agenda is just a review of the agenda for tonight. Uh, we'll start with a review of the minutes, which might take a little while, while because our last meeting was quite long. Uh, then I'll review a few written communications that we have received. Then we'll have a uh, council report. Yeah. Right. Uh, we'll have a time for citizen comments, uh, which are comments about anything that's not on the agenda for tonight. Uh, and then we'll have uh, two public hearings, a conditional use uh, hearing from uh, Jennifer Horner on Charles Sides for a, uh, blah, 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 an accessory dwelling unit. And the second public hearing, a replat application for a series of, of uh, uh, lots on, uh, what was it, on West Center College Street. Uh, those are two public hearings. After that, we'll have a discussion on old business of infrastructure, uh, discussion of new business. We have to nominate a new chair and a new vice chair for the new year. Agenda planning, which is everybody's favorite part. And then finally, we'll get to adjourn eventually, hopefully before midnight. So, okay. Uh, um, I just wanted to add mm -hmm. somewhere on there that we have some brief discussion under old business about the comp plan. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we'll move on to the review of the minutes from the last meeting and we'll just go through it uh, page by page. Are there any corrections or clarifications needed on page one? Page two. Page three? Yes. Okay. Um, a little bit above the, mi the middle. Um, there's a, a reference to uh, something that I said at the bottom of a... Is that the paragraph yeah. that begins, McQueen implied? Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. yes. The, the last line says, she equated a no, a no vote, to the project with a desire not to house seniors. That is incorrect. It's, I didn't equate it with a desire, more and it would have that impact, in other words not intentionally wanting to, but that that would be the effect of. Having the effect of? Yes. That would be good, yeah. Anything else on page three? Page four? Page five? Page six. Page seven. Page eight. Um, is there a motion to accept the minutes as? Uh, and just like, who all was Oh, here. right. <laughs> so maybe we should, we need to adopt. Yes. So well, move move to adopt the minutes. Adopt. So adopt. We can all vote. Yes. Okay. I, so motion to adopt I make the that motion. Second. We have four people here, but okay. Okay, so we move in second that we adopt the minutes. Uh, uh, call the roll, please. Uh, and we can just do that by a voice. By a voice vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Got it. Mm. Uh, let's see. Communications.
communications we receive. Uh, first is a letter from uh, William Bradford and Carolyn Bradford about the replat on, uh, to, uh, on uh, West Center College Street. Um, is that in the packet? Yes, it is. Okay. Letter. Uh, uh, concern about the uh, side distance. No? And then there is <coughs> the planning and zoning, the annual report to the planning and zoning office. And that is a draft form, so maybe we could just briefly put that under new business. I just okay. take a minute to talk about that. See if anybody has any changes to it. Okay. Because it, it, uh, the council wants it on the 22nd. Okay. <laughs> and then we have the uh, another letter uh, concerning the uh, active transportation plan which details a list of concerns uh, uh, about uh, particularly I think about seven aspects of the active transportation plan. Are there any other communications? That... None That's from mine and just so that you know I did send that on to the uh, to Brian House who's passing it on to the the active transportation committee for their review as well. Right. Uh, let's move on to the council report. Yeah. Marianne. So at the last council meeting, we uh, had the first reading for the ordinance to approve the PUD for the senior housing apartment project. Uh, we had a resolution of support for the Agraria Trail, which I think is part of the active transportation plan. I'm not sure if it's part of it, but at any rate, it is. It is part of the act of transportation. Uh, we had some discussion about commission budgets, and I don't know whether planning commission needs to do anything else in regard to submitting a budget. Not uh, I mean, we have the money put in for the comp plan. We, right. No. Okay. Uh, and then there was a um, brief uh, discussion. Well, Patty Bates had included some uh, issues about transient lodging in her report and we will be having a more thorough discussion at our next council meeting and I believe that this is something that Planning Commission should weigh in on probably after that our next council meeting and that's all that I have. Any questions? Okay. Um, now we have the time for uh, citizen comments. I'd like to uh, open citizen comments or uh, any comments anybody would like to make, bring before Planning Commission about anything that's not on tonight's agenda. Right. Seeing nothing, I guess uh, close the uh, citizen comments section and move on to the public hearings. Huh? The first public hearing, uh, conditional use. Um, Jennifer Horner, Charles Sides of 207 North Wicker Street uh, have submitted an application for an accessory dwelling unit. Want to sure. Uh, they uh, have submitted an application to construct an accessory dwelling unit in the rear of their property at 207 North Winter. Um, they currently use the primary dwelling as a retreat for a business, but, um, and as you may recall, several years ago, uh, um, Ms. Ho Ms. Horner was here at the Planning Commission for approval of this business um, as a professional office for her. Uh, retreat counseling services. Um, she's now looking into the future um, and would like to at some point have um, the primary, primary dwelling um, will become their permanent home and um, they would like to move into Yellow Springs um, and the accessory dwelling unit is going to serve as an office um, living space uh, for them um, as giving them the option in the future uh, to live in the accessory dwelling unit at some point and rent out the primary. 
So as far as the requirements of what I've seen for the plan, they, they meet the requirements for the um, setbacks uh, and the size of the accessory dwelling unit in relationship to the primary. Um, there was some concern um, about uh, stormwater uh, and I did talk with the public works director who went on site or had had someone from his staff go on site and they took a look at that um, and uh, said that there needs to be a couple of things done in regards to um, tying in not the stormwater as well but but he said the contractor is aware of that this this particular property also has an unusual situation from many many years ago in which um, the house next to it both properties were tied together with their sewer utilities and so the applicants the applicants and the contractor are aware that um, this will have to be changed in order for that when they go to do this accessory dwelling unit that they're going to have to split that off and so that the neighbor next door has their own <laughs> sewer connection that is separate from theirs. Um, as far as uh, the rest goes with this, um, they have enough parking off street. There won't be any new drive access points. Um, I do um, have that recommendation from the public works director um, about making a condition that the stormwater be addressed through either a storm some sort of stormwater pump or other other type of stormwater drainage design like a French drain or something but the contractor as I said is aware of that <coughs> that's, it. that's it for me okay. mm -hmm. uh, are we open public hearing on this now? <coughs> if any, if anybody else has anything. Yes, I, I, I'd like to know what the stormwater situation is and what the remedy or remedies for it would be. Uh, the contractor is not here. Um, I don't know if the property owners can speak to it. <laughs> well, he, he, he's he's coming from the village side of it. <laughs> the, the property, I'm Johnny Burns, Village Public Works Director. The property sits low in the back, therefore to get the water so it doesn't disperse to the neighbors, they have to somehow get a French drain, put it to the street. It cannot run off to the other neighbors' properties and create properties. So the elevation from the road to the back of the property is from Winter, Street. from Winter Street to the rear of the property falls the opposite direction. So they have to be able to get their stormwater from there to Winter Street. So they may have to use rain barrels. They may have to do pumps or something. That's, that's the contractor's what he wants to do. Is the are the other properties that line that alley all similar in the same condition with water collecting back there? There's yeah. no alley. There's no alley in the rear of that property. Um, according to GIS, there's a an abandoned alley back there that the properties don't yeah. seem to have claimed. Be where was it, if it was vacated, then it's become just a part of people's yards. Yeah. Correct. There's, there's, there's not. No there's no any. Vi there's not a visible alley there anymore. That's too bad because I think that would have been an opportunity to do a little retention swale been, back there you, and just let it grow up and go away. Right. Well, that's a shame. Well, could um, that still be it, done? Well, I, I think that it would certainly be worth finding out if the um, if that alley was in fact claimed by the property owners, it's not 
on the, it's not on these maps. So if there, if that alley has not been vacated, then what would you suggest? And it's still under the contractor and the property owner to come back and give us a plan. Okay. Because even if it is not vacated, it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, yeah. But it can, it's considered, if it's a vacated alley, it's considered public right of way. If it's not a vacated alley, it's still a public right of way. Correct. The public can claim that right of way as a storm retention basin and collect that water and just let it seep into the ground, dig it a little deeper and let it store back there and fill it full of plants. And that'll take care of that storm water without having, for all the properties along that yet to be vacated alley. I don't know. I mean, it's a solution yeah. that would take care of a neighborhood problem without putting the onus on one property owner to take care of that. The other two properties are low, too? Yeah. Okay. All the Winter's Creek's low. So if it, even if it's, if, if it has become part of people's properties, if they collectively agree to do that, they could do that, couldn't they? Mm-hmm. And so the value is that then the stormwater would seep into the ground rather than going into our stormwater system and you'd have a rain garden or water garden or something. Yep, go right ahead. Yeah. Well, hold on. Yeah. yeah, we need to hold up and open the public hearing before that happens. So once these guys get done, then we'll open it up and you. Um, I did have another question. Um, I had always thought that we were permitting one accessory unit per lot, not two. So if there's a garage and then there's an accessory dwelling unit, that would be two accessory units on the same property. We're permitting sheds, like small sheds, but not garages and accessory dwelling units and the primary residence. And I didn't. I never I, understood it that way. Okay. There's people have lots of accessory structures on their property, um, but I, yeah, I never understood it that and garages. the accessory dwelling unit was its own unique self. As long as, um, percentage, right? as long as the lot coverage was met, I mean, you couldn't have two accessory dwelling units, but you could still have a separate accessory structure. I never, I never understood it that you can only have either or. There certainly are a lot of places in town that have a garage and an accessory dwelling unit. Yeah, I think right. it would probably defeat the purpose of the accessory dwelling unit if you have, because you, because some of the, some garages are just they need they're used for garages. Um, no, but I never understood it that way. I'm just checking. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. in my head, and I honestly didn't look it up. Yeah. And I didn't bring my book, so. Yeah. So what we're concerned with is the 2,400 square feet that they've got 40 percent. No matter what they do, as long as they're under the 40 percent. Correct. Right. Uh, yeah. The total of all accessory structures cannot go. Uh, the total of the footprints of all buildings sure. that are on that property cannot exceed that. Yes. And then, of course, the accessory dwelling unit cannot be larger than 66% of the primary dwelling or 800 square feet, whichever is less. And they meet that requirement. Can I just ask a clarifying question? Oh, hang on. Are we? Any other questions or concerns for the Planning Commission? Or I'll wait until. Yeah, we have to we have to open the public hearing to hear from you. Okay, I guess uh, yeah, we can open the public hearing now. So if you have uh, uh, any questions or concerns, uh, please step forward, state your name for the record, and tell us what you think, please. Jenny Horner. Um, interesting suggestion about what did you call it, Ted? A swale or dry That's basin? A, 
basically a retention basin. A retention basin. Which means that it's holding storm water, you fill it full of plants that like water, and it just absorbs the water or lets it seep into the ground without having to try to pipe it mm -hmm. into a system. Uphill. Yeah, uphill. <laughs> Outside. Well, it was particularly, well, that's environmentally sensitive um, uh, and a simple solution. And I liked the, the sound of we wouldn't have to bear the total of expense of uh, dispersing. It would help to resolve um, a potential issue. Well, definitely an issue since all of Winter Street is so low and we've got lots of water issues. We just waterproofed the basement last week. Um, the question is, um, who would bear the expense of creating that? Well, I mean, it's in a worst case scenario, if that alley is yet to be vacated behind your property, you could use 52 foot of that yet to be vacated alley and create your own retention basin that's only 50 feet wide to help your cause. I think that it would be worthwhile to contacting the neighbors and seeing if they all would agree to such a solution and then you could all split the cost, especially if you have a contractor out there with a little piece of equipment that could do it easily. You know, so yes, the burden would fall on you to provide it for your property alone behind your property alone. But I, I think that there's a collective solution with the other neighbors. And I don't know where the fence lines are because you've got a chain link, we've got a chain link, and, and I don't know if Anybody knows whether on both it's yes. I mean, acro across the backyard. Yeah. yeah. So is we need all to back up to the fences, mm -hmm. So there's well, no the open GIS, area. You know, the the tax map mm -hmm. shows that your okay. lot is 162 deep on one deep. side and 177 on the other side. So somebody is got that alley, the old alley, fenced in on their property. The whole road okay, does. I'm name. Gina Hayes. I am at uh, 209 North Winter. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, I know that there is there is a right of way or used to be a right of way. I just bought a couple years ago there. Um, but there are utility poles that exist uh, along that. But there's no, I mean, ev people years and years, many, you know, built fences kind of all along there. I can't tell you how far down it goes in between the two roads, but there's nothing by way of an alley. I know, I mean, there used to be a right of way, maybe there was something, but nothing remnants of like a true alley any, any Well, longer. if there's utility poles, there's an easement, a dedicated right. they utility. Could have, yeah, they would have to move the fence or something is what I've heard from neighbors in the past if they need to access them somehow, but that's a rarity and hasn't really happened, I guess, so. In any case, um, well, then there. see, a le again, legally, Chris, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but if there's still an easement, a utility easement back mm -hmm. there, stormwater could be considered a utility easement. I mean, if your drainage is part of, you know, trying to mitigate issues, mm -hmm. you know, and stormwater collection could be used within that easement, I think. I could see that. I don't see you getting buy in from neighbors, only in particular because. Most people, none of us use the rear of our property, really. I mean, there, it's usually just, it's a grassy area with trees. So I don't know that you would get a buy-in from, a collective buy-in if people aren't utilizing that portion of their property anyways. But that's just me. Yeah, uh, when, yeah I mean, it's, you know, certainly on my end, it's just a solution. Yeah. Because pumping water outside uphill. My car know, just got stuck yesterday uphill. So yeah, yeah, there's a little hill there that's a problem for a number of reasons. But... Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things to think about that um, just because we have so much flooding and that kind of thing in our area. So yeah, thanks. You know, the other issue that I'll say about that is even if you pump your water off your property, you're going to get migrating water from your adjacent property owners to your property and you're going to be pumping their water. And if your pump fails, they're going to get upset with you because your pump failed. I mean, it's just, it's, it's not a real great solution. I'm not saying that we wouldn't put that in our conditions, but, you know, storm water is an issue back there and you put a, another accessory unit on your property, it is going to take more storm water and it's going to worsen that problem. There's no question about that. So coming up with something is important. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, me, Mike McKeever at uh, 130 North Walnut. So we are at the southeast corner of the property in question there. And all the water in that neighborhood does tend to flow southeast. Uh, that portion of Walnut Street becomes a river every time it rains. Uh, we are trying to do what we can on our property to uh, uh, hold the water and uh, not dump to the street as much as possible, but uh, it's, it's difficult. The, the soil, at least on our property, seems to not perk very well, and it seems to be about four feet down to just solid limestone. Um, so I have no uh, real issues with the, uh, their uh, plan for the additional dwelling unit. Um, but uh, Denise said earlier, raised a question, though, uh, of a misunderstanding I think I had with uh, the code. Uh, do I understand that the 800 square foot restriction for accessory buildings is per building then. It's not a sum of all accessory buildings. No, it's only for the accessory dwelling unit. It, it, the accessory dwelling unit itself cannot be, <clears throat> it, it can only be 66% of the primary dwelling. But if you have a primary dwelling that's 3,000 square feet, then 800 is the max. Okay, well, I, I probably misread the, uh, the code, uh, 1260.04. Says accessory structures shall not exceed 66% of the principal building. They mean, or 800 square feet, whichever is less. They mean per accessory structure. So, because yeah. I'm, I, I have an accessory structure that's 800 square feet, and if I wanted to put another 10 by 10 storage unit or something, that would I was assuming that that would not be permitted because I've used the 800 square feet. But you're saying that I could have an additional accessory structure. Yes, because... And this is totally unrelated to the yeah, no, question. No, yeah, yeah. You, yes, you could. I it, as long as you don't, as you meet the total lot coverage. Okay, okay, very good, thank you. Um, back to the uh, uh, question of that alley. I don't have an answer for that either. Uh, I know these GIS maps are not exactly, uh, you know, a surveyor's uh, guide. Uh, we bought the uh, house we're in uh, about five years ago, and uh, the fence that's behind us that, that abuts to the uh, property in question, um, I'm pretty sure on our survey, the, uh, the mark at the back end of, of our lot ended up right at where the existing fence is, which would tell me that most of the alley right of way is actually in their yard. I don't know that for a fact, though. Uh, this alley seems to abut about eight properties, and I think that's where that uh, imaginary alley is, is, is questioned then for eight different properties. Uh, it'd be intriguing to have it properly surveyed and know what the status of that, you know, has that been abandoned? It's not a usable alley. It doesn't have an opening on either end, it's a uh, uh, landlocked property. It's which, a landlocked, yeah, it's pretty. Which is not actually supposed to happen, I, I don't believe. But, uh, um, so uh, yeah. that all said, uh, we'd love to be involved in whatever solution to, uh, to get the thing done. Uh, retention is great, pumping out is great. Uh, my concern is uh, water coming our direction. Um, and, you know, if, if yeah. there's anything uh, we can do to help uh, solve this, let me know. But, uh. Okay. Well, there is an effort on the village's part to do a stormwater survey of the village and really try to hone in on where these watersheds are going at and at what rate. I mm -hmm. personally live on Railroad Street, so all your water comes over my line <laughs> yes. before it goes down. Next tier line. down. Yeah, so I really get it. I mean, mm -hmm. it is when it's a heavy rain, it's like a river. It's yeah. amazing how much water comes down Yeah, that watershed. Um, solution, you know, it, it's not going to ultimately end up on each individual homeowner's 
list to take care of their own stormwater when there's such a massive problem. You know, like I right. said, it's, <coughs> they can take care of their water, but I guarantee you that it, there's no way of controlling the neighbor's water as it comes onto their property that then they're trying to get rid of. It, right. It's just going to be a difficult solution. You know, is it to the extent? Well, and, and the, uh, excuse me, but uh, the ultimate solution is going to be, I mean, it's typical that we then pass the water on to Walnut Street and all ends up <coughs> down at uh, the intersection at uh, uh, Dayton. Um, yeah. And I know, you know, the village is fairly progressive, and that is exactly the wrong thing to be, to be doing with uh, uh, runoff. You know, we should, as you said, be trying to retain it. And, and uh, again, I, I don't know how well the area perks, but there's some way to uh, do that. You know, I mean, I'm, I've always been an advocate of alleys, and it's, you know, it's really a shame that this alley has been vacated over time, mm -hmm. you know, by just default. People kind of claim it, you yes. know, but if it were still an alley, <coughs> there would be a, a right-of-way that could easily be piped, if nothing else, or swaled or created to um, use as a way to take some of that water away in these lines as it goes toward, you know, east, north to south, really. Mm -hmm. But, you know, those options aren't on the table anymore, um, so the problem gets harder. You know, I mean, it just, it's a difficulty. Okay, well, with that, I'll just, I'll register that my concern is the water and, and no other issues with the uh, plan they've submitted, and if there's anything we can do to be of assistance, let me know. Thank you. Any other public comments about this? All right. So we'll close the public hearing on that. Bring it back over here. ask a clarifying question mm -hmm. of Denise if uh, it were a suggestion on the part of Planning Commission to explore or, or an option to allow this uh, requester to explore the notion of a swale would they need to get an engineering report and bring that back to the village in terms of how much water could be mitigated through that process would you want that I mean <clears throat> typically I mean in, in these situations, it's really the responsibility of the property owner, and so the contractor has to, you know, take care of that. Um, if we're putting that as a condition, then, then it may be something that we could add as a requirement. Um, typically, the residents, residential, single-family residential houses are exempt from yep. providing stormwater management on their property. So we are a already asking that yeah. something be taken care of that they're, I don't think that they're required to take care of. Right. But Single and that's single. not, you know, where we fall on that, I'm not sure. I, mm -hmm. I'm struggling with that. I, I think the reason that we had, well, the one recommendation was clearly because of the issue of, of the fact that the the two were tied together, that that needed to be separated. But um, with this other one, I think it's just simply because we just want to ensure how wh whatever the solution that they come up with, um, that, that they're pretty confident that that's going to work because of the fact that it slopes down. Um, and really that comes, if you approve at this point, we're not at, we're not at the point of um, him submitting his um, actual design for where Johnny has to sign off on all that, the electric, water, and sewer. Well, I think the bigger question becomes if the village, the village recognizes <coughs> that there is a watershed issue, particularly in this part of town. I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. been in conversations as long as I've lived here, mm -hmm. right? And so if you know, Johnny has taken initiative to get this study done because he recognizes that there is a serious problem. And if the survey comes back and identifies how this problem exists, and therefore Johnny is able to, I'm speaking on your behalf, Johnny, 
but um, if there's a way to engineer a solution, then that's going to be a collective, a government-funded thing. So yeah. I'm having an issue putting an individual house on, you know, a, an application in front of us that's mandating that this particular lot, which they're not required to do, is take care of their stormwater through a mechanism, a mechanical means, that quite frankly is going to fail. It's, it's going to fail because they, they don't work. Is it possible to find out if the alley has been officially vacated or yeah. not? Or is yeah. I mean, can we find out? Well, I mean, parts of it have. I, it looks yeah. like what's right directly <coughs> behind their house, like for three properties, is still under the village. But I mean, we're talking about something now that if we if we don't let them find have their own solution, then it could be a while before our what we're going to do is going to happen, and that and that just denies them the ability to do it now well so. the, well there is the water problem that exists so are, is the village saying that because they're going to put an impervious 20 by 40 footprint on the ground more or less that that's going to have a big impact bigger impact on the situation that already exists yeah it I will mean, because I mean, the water hits that roof and runs off it a lot quicker than it does when it's running across grass. You know, because the grass slows it down and it does absorb a But portion does of that water. amount of square footage in terms of that whole property have much of that much much of an impact? It will on this gentleman right here. You know, that's really it is going to make an issue to the adjacent property owner where it's already shedding and going on to that property, it will worsen that situation, without question. To what extent? I don't know. I mean, there's no way of telling. You know, there are other things that they can do. Um, you know, put, um, you know, try to, to do a rain garden behind the accessory dwelling in it, you know, across your whole property line, and just try to uh, mitigate that flow as much as humanly possible. Thing, trying to pipe it out it's, it's a real problem no I we, believe me we had this discussion and we don't disagree with that but you know it is one possibility that and it's 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 the it's on the property owner I, I think that's the reason why we come up with we wanted the contractor to come back to us and say this is what we're going to do. That way, when this gentleman here comes to the planning and zoning and says, why didn't you guys think about this? We can say, well, we did, and this is what they've designed. Uh, the other thing with the swell in the back, with there being electric poles back there, we got to watch putting the swell because we got to get back there to work as well. And if we got to get equipment there and we got to go down in the swell and back up, it, you know, we're hindering ourselves that way. So we have to watch what we do and how we do it. That's why we said it's the contractor's responsibility to come back and, and give us the well, I was I'm assuming that that 15-foot alley is, I mean, by, by dimensions of their lot, that 15-foot alley is still there by the dimensions. Now, I'm not saying I don't know the reality. Right. I'm just saying by dimensions. So I was suggesting the swale between their property line and the back of the accessory dwelling unit, which would be totally on their property and not in that vacated 15 foot, which is your easement. Now, okay. if, the, if, the, if the fence goes all the way back, right. you know, that's something right. when you're laying out the, the accessory unit, you, you need to know where your pins really are. Um, and it doesn't hurt to pay a surveyor to go out and find your pins. So are we going to be setting a precedent here that every time someone, not just an accessory building, but a building in, <coughs> is going to have to contain well, their stormwater? I mean, we don't requ require that they have to go through an expensive engineering study. However, everybody has to, is required to make sure that stormwater does not run off from their property onto their neighbors. That's automatically on everybody. In this particular situation, because of the topography, we brought wanted to bring it to the forefront and have the discussion 
just so everybody knew now that little, this is what this has to be addressed. Well, but I mean, I would, it's not going to always be, and not everybody is going to be the same. I would tend to disagree in the in the extent that topography flows in sheets. It's not, you know, and so if if from Winter Street to Walnut Street, that water sheets across all those properties towards Walnut. And there is no way that all properties have to take care of their own stormwater and divert it off of their property to the front, again, uphill. It goes to Walnut Street, so their requirement is that they have to just restrict the flow, if it was a commercial property, restrict that flow and collect it and hold it long enough for it to keep at the same rate that it is. But it's still going on at adjacent property. And, and that's what we said at the very beginning. They can do rain barrels, they can do however they want to do it, but we need to know what their ideal is so we can have it written down in our notes. Yeah, I mean, I think that's really they can, they, If they feel they can pump it out and that's what they want to do, then that's their responsibility. But we want it to be documented that the village has done a due diligence to make sure that it's Walnut right. Street is not affected. Yeah, I mean, I get that. I really do get that. Well, I'd like a clarif clarification. I was not aware that on an individual lot, if a person is building a home, a garage, whatever, that they have to ensure that the stormwater stays on their property. They don't. They can't. So this is a special case. No, wait a minute. I'm, I'm confused. I thought it was that they had to ensure that there would not be an increase in the... Right. Let me, I have to find it here. But at any time, at any building is going to create an, a less permeable part surface. Of the, part of the whole purpose of side yard setbacks and rear yard setbacks is to have channels for water between buildings mm -hmm. on properties to public right -of ways That's one of the reasons why we have setbacks. So typically what we do on our drawings is we show, you know, the structure, we show sloping away from the house to a swale between down the side yard setback to either whichever way it goes, the front or the back. That's how we typically handle it and nothing more. You know, so it's not puddling or it's not running across the backyard to the center of somebody's backyard, but it continues that swale ideally between houses and the flat and blah, 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 blah. There's, <clears throat> that's under for site plan review, but there was, <clears throat> There is a stormwater under review standards for um, site plan review, but there is, it's also in another place. But this is stormwater detention and drainage systems shall be designed so that the removal of surface waters will not adversely affect neighboring properties or public stormwater drainage systems. But that's, and for, that's not for a single family. Unless impractical. There isn't any site plan review requirement for a single right family. but it's uh, but uh, what I'm saying is it's somewhere else and we just can't find it right now where it's it's it's, it's also uh -huh. noted somewhere else this isn't the only place and I'm trying to find that um, Chris, Chris, is Well, I suppose if they're willing to do something, then maybe it's not an issue. Oh, here it is. It's oh. just under other provisions of your general provisions. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> when land is developed or redeveloped and or the surface characteristics 
of the property change, the increased impervious surfaces, site grading, these activities shall not result in additional stormwater runoff flowing to adjacent properties. And that's just in the general provisions. So that just applies what, what, to everybody. What's this, what's the, code? Um, the general provisions, 1260, chapter 1260. 1260 Did you, and that was that? chapter 12, um, 1260.05E. Uh, I still don't think that that applies to single family residents. It's already been platted, built on, and has existed for 100 years. I think that that's intended for new plats. No, it's not under the planning section. I mean, what's in general provisions is accessory buildings and structures. Uh, temporary buildings are all under that same chapter. It's not under the planning, it's under the zoning code. I mean, that can pose a real problem for because we're going, you know, I mean, if we take it to that level, we're now going to have to ask our applicants to submit a survey and show how, in fact, these things are taken care of by a survey and topography. Because there's no other way to do it. Yeah, it. How can you show this board that you're taking care of a solution that you can't even define by engineering? And the engineering is a survey. It's a topographic survey so people would be required to have that yeah. engineering survey done to show what the water flow yes. is and how they're going to mitigate it for yeah. every for every single, well every everything that we do anything that gets on. built it about it. because it's never been that way I mean there's two years that comes up as since well. I've been on a board here and I've built well, is that with new or is that just with auxiliary now that we're more, we're more focused on infilling now, is that... Well, is that if we do anything, if we plat, <coughs> create a new plat for new homes, we have to show how right. stormwater is being managed. But, you know, so detention ponds and all right. that stuff are built. And if we do a single residence within a plat, there's already channels created in that plat showing where the stormwater is supposed to be diverted through swales, usually inside yard setbacks. And so that's how it's done. You know, in a case where we've got an old plat, right, there, where those provisions are, I have no clue. It may have been in the alley. You know, that, that alley may have served at may one point. may not have been there at all. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, and, but it's just been covered up, and those conditions have changed, and over the course of 50 years, the, the issues of water management have deteriorated mm -hmm. to nothing, and now it's a real problem. And so. as I think, as you were pointing out, as we are encouraging more infill, then this will become more of a problem. Yeah. So. And so, yeah. and, that, and that's why we are taking this microscopically here because we, do, this is all we have. And uh, from staff's perspective, I don't feel comfortable um, not considering those ramifications. I mean, because of this infill, if we're gonna if we're gonna allow this infill, we have to be thinking about that. Well, and I think Denise, it, I mean, if you, if this was a street that existed only on the top of a hill and Denise sent Johnny out to take a look at the property and come back with any concerns he would have, he would say, well, one of them isn't stormwater because there's nothing below that hill and there's no possibility for any problem with stormwater. We don't need to attach that as a condition. It simply doesn't exist. If but you're looking at true, a, Judy, because if you have a house on a hill and nothing and below it, I'm making something up. So if you have and, and a low-lying area and, and lots of houses in that low-lying area, Denise is going to send Johnny out and say, do we have a problem here potentially if we increase impervious surface? And he reports back, yeah, we do. That's an issue for that neighborhood, and it may be that Planning Commission would come back and say, we simply can't permit any accessory dwelling units in that neighborhood unless they collectively agree or unless we as a governmental body agree that we are going to mitigate that situation. <coughs> but I think that it is being addressed because there isn't a situation that Denise ever has where she does not send public works out to say what issues do I need to attach, what conditions need to be attached to this. But it, it's not, I'm, we're picking on you because we found this thing in the code. It's, <laughs> boy, this condition exists here, it just doesn't over here. Well, then we, you know, and I agree with that 100%. I think that 
you know, the village doing due diligence and going out and looking at condi existing conditions that may be an issue and to try to, for this board to mitigate worsening those conditions is our responsibility, period, end of story. Mm -hmm. So under that scenario, if we do find that stormwater is an issue but we don't have any backup that says that there's a history of adding a garage and having to do a study to mitigate, I mean, what what does that mean to a homeowner, right? I mean, it, with we can't just say try because nobody's going to try. You know, put a rain barrel out there. Let's, I mean, come on. The rain barrel fills up and you, you've done nothing. So if, if we're going to enforce something, we have to enforce something. We can't just enforce good intentions. Well, I think we're just trying to get ahead of the ball here a bit. I mean, we've had, we have had a situation where the person built the house and then all of the water drained onto the neighbor's prop property after the fact. And then we had to go and have, they had to do something to, to mitigate it. Well, I think we so, do I mean, need to I mean, have I'll, some way of dealing with this, but no. we have not determined what a fair and effective and we weren't we were we weren't saying that we're coming up with a solution we were putting that on the contractor to say you come up with a solution if any if they find out in a year that doesn't work then then they've got to fix that well that's but that's where it gets into the sticky wicket because what is we have to quantify a solution we can't just throw out an idea right it that's not how it works we have to literally quantify it. There's this, we're gonna increase this water flow by X amount of gallons per <coughs> minute per hour. And, and how do you take care of that rate as it flows off of your lot? And where does it go? And show us where it goes and how it's collected. That's the only way to quantify the solution. So to say, to ask a contractor just take care of it, well, he can just, he can dig a hole and say, I took care of it. What are you going to do? Say, when well, is this? well, typically, it typically it's been after the fact. Sure. It's been, you know, they have up to a year afterwards. If there's problems, they have to come back and fix it. But as we get more involved with the infilling now, I, I, this is going to come up. This is going to come uh, up. We time just time after again. spills, yeah. we need to be more proactive at the forefront. So it comes out to do we, that. Do we look at the the homeowner taking care of that because they want the responsibility of going with their dwelling? So, and that's where we come down. Is that going to be a general statement for every homeowner, or are we going to say is the village going to be? In, no, I think it will this? be a homeowner thing. But but we have to know what it is. Yeah. What, what, do we know when the building is going to start? Well, we haven't gotten to that point yet. I mean, well, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, it seems to me that planning commission needs to come up with some general How solution. <laughs> or statement of how this is going to be well, managed. Well, the solutions are defined when it becomes a commercial building or a plat of home. No, I mean, given that we are no, allowing increased yeah. infill in existing neighborhoods that is going to create more storm water issues along with the existing storm water issues, we what I'm I think we need to the, have the, the protocols are set by um, the way other property owners have to mitigate those waters. So they're quantified oh, by okay. protocol. So we should, our solution that we're looking at should follow similar <laughs> protocols, maybe not to the to extent. Yeah, because they gotta be accepted universally by standards that contractors can understand. And that goes through the state of Ohio, all of those stormwater regulations. So we have to, we have to tie that and link that to systems that exist so that we can quantify it. So I was wondering when this building is going to be started because maybe there's time to defer this piece of that until we get a statement in our code that says how we're going to handle it. Well, one of the old ways in the old plats, one of the ways that they dealt with stone water is put in the cistern, you know, and then they yes, used the green water. I mean, yeah. it's how they flush their toilets and clean their laundries. Yeah. Right. You know? I had one in and my those house. systems were incredible. They work great. You Johnny, know? do we want to add to the storm system, storm water system as is? We're pretty taxed now. Do we want is that something that is going to if we take I'm just saying just in a generalization, 
if we thought that do we want to dump water into the storm sewers, is that an avenue that we want to even proceed as this infilling keeps on coming, growing, or is that something that you want to be away from and say, whereas a cistern may be a better way to go, or, or a retention, or, or things of that nature, as opposed to dumping into and stressing out the, the system? I think we have time. Yes and no. <laughs> um, that's why we have some current bids that we've got to open and current stuff to look at storm-wise. Um, I'm like Ted. I, I think swells are great. I don't think that we should be dumping everything down the storm sewer. But when we're already in a low-lying area uh, and we're already maxed out in that area storm-wise anyway, it, it's... Well, I mean, that goes right to the bioswale concept Absolutely. and rain garden concept. You know, we want to plant, put plant material in these low-lying areas to suck as much water as we possibly can, you know, naturally, without diverting it off-site. Winter Street, mm -hmm. Walnut Street, Railroad Street, and all that is in a bad situation because, you know, you're, if you get four foot in that neighborhood with a limestone, you're, oh, I know. you're doing good. Yeah. So, you go to the other end of town, you can dig all day long, so. But I think, you know, ultimately, I think that with this stormwater study, correct me if I'm wrong, there's going to, at least, we're going to know better we will. what this deal is. And with that knowledge, we're going to be able to start to look at ways to mitigate that in a bigger area, you know, right, right? In, in a holistic way. You know, so we're down to, in this micro example here, what we're trying to do is just not let this gentleman be affected by their addition Correct. for the time being until the building <coughs> can possibly come up with bigger solutions. Correct. I think that that's fair. You know, it's unfortunate by your timing, but, you know, if you were on the other side of the fence <coughs> and somebody was building an accessory dwelling unit and dumping a lot more water on a problem that you were already having, you'd be upset. So we, that's our job is to look at that and really consider that. All right, we need to, thank you. Um, just real quickly, if I may. Very quick. Um, just two points. One, uh, I'm a little concerned with the uh, Mr. Donnell's implication that parts of the code don't apply because they haven't been applied to properties in the past. Um, that still doesn't change what the code is. And that section of code that Denise referenced also is the section that says I'm not allowed to accumulate, place, store, uh, trash, litter, or junk on the premises in the village. You certainly wouldn't say that doesn't apply to the same residential area we're talking about, but that's that same area of the code that says that you will uh, not result in additional stormwater runoff flowing to adjacent properties. The second point is just building a swale is, is a great idea, and, I, and I'm all for, you know, retention and, and trying to perk water rather than dump water into the streets and the storm sewers. Um, my sister-in-law is a landscape designer, and we've had quite a few conversations about how you do this sort of thing, and including, like, uh, like a uh, dry well, but there are proper ways to do it and it can be studied. Uh, my rough calculations show that, you know, two inches of rain on 600 square feet of an impervious piece of property would generate about 750 gallons of water to deal with. Um, you can do some test holes, and even if you dug a swale, you would want to do some test holes, fill it with water, time it, see how much water disappears in 24 hours, and you can calculate how uh, uh, pervious the, the area is. Right now, I don't have a problem with water on their property coming onto our property that I'm aware of. I don't have any running water issues coming in. Um, so their property is perking. It is doing the right thing. And the remaining property area there may even be sufficient to handle that extra theoretical 700 gallons. Sure. But it's easy, it's easy to do a study if, if you know what you're doing. I'm, I'm no expert, but there are people out there that could pretty quickly answer how, how much that property perks now, how much it could perk 
is it even at its capacity? Would a swale solve the problem? And again, like, like I say, I'd, I'd like to be part of the solution rather than just be an impediment here, but those are my thoughts. Well, I think you've actually stated my concern. You know, it, what you did in your conversation there was quantify mm -hmm. the, the solution. Mm -hmm. You know, you identified it in a quantifiable 700 gallons <coughs> per time, and you now have the ability to test that. And that can be done. Yes. yes. And so, the, you know, I think for us as a board, we get back to how can we mandate to this homeowner to our satisfaction in a solution that these conditions are being met? That's the issue. You know, and it's, it's trial and error is not something that we want to take on as a solution for this board on, this, on any application for that matter. All right. So we have to make a decision. I'd say it's a difficult question. Yeah, in that, I'm trying in to that, think it, how many. But without addressing the problem, <coughs> the problem yeah. is always addressed in that the public works director is always sent to that site to assess whether or not there is a problem. And, and it has never occurred before? In most cases, to be honest with you, the accessory dwelling units have not been new buildings. They have been top floors of existing garages in most cases. So it's whatever the water was already <coughs> isn't going to be any different because you're just developing a second floor of an, of an existing footprint. Um, so I think that, you know, if Planning Commission approves this um, <coughs> and with the conditions that lets the staff work with the contractor to ensure uh, something that's going to look like it's going to work. We'd already, I, I believe, John, you'd already talked with the contractor already about it. Yeah. So, I mean, he, there was some ideas there. And knowing that we've got a neighbor in the back, maybe we can look at the bios well. The contractor, the estimate. I mean, my feeling on it is, uh, at this point, um, it already states just that you have to ensure stormwater stays mitigated, and so that's really all the approval is, is that as part of the condition is this has to make sure that that. And we're putting this on the homeowner. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, here's why that particular. Okay. Here's. In, in, when when we design a new plat, I'll use Glenside. All right, Glenside is a plat that I built, designed and built. When we designed Glenside, we showed how the setbacks in the rear yard were used, and we graded so that those stormwater channels collected to a detention basin. Mm -hmm. Every property owner had the should direct their stormwater to that swale, which crosses property line to get to the detention basin. So to say that we are restricting the additional water in, a, in a, an easement swale to a plat detention basin, it, that's counterproductive for, to me and my thinking. Because when you build a plat of homes, you've got to you've got to take care of all of that stormwater and design it into a thing. You know the problem that we have here is that there very there very well may have been those systems in place when these old plats were built, but over the course of the year, vegetation and other things has delineated the effectiveness of that natural system. The new stormwater study is actually going to show 
how that's true. So the and and what it's going to I bet you what it goes back to is those old swales that were designed into it are going to have to be restored so that we can channel this stormwater out. If we make the statement that each individual homeowner in those old plats have to take care of their own stormwater, then why are we even looking at, why do we even care if there's a stormwater problem? So what do you recommend in this situation? Yeah. Well, in this situation, I think that, well, we have a choice. We can deny the application because it's going to contribute to a problem. I don't think I want to go there, certainly. I, I, it's not even, to me, that's not even a consideration. I think that there is uh, we can say that under this condition, because this situation is different, we're going to rely on the homeowner to mitigate this problem to staff satisfaction. All right, and get it off, get it public record, it's on the record, it's a mitigated solution, and that's the way it is, it falls back on you to enforce, mm -hmm. Johnny to enforce. I'm good with that as okay. a recommendation. Okay. All right. But I don't want to set a precedent. You know what I'm saying? But that's going to continue to happen, though, as we keep on putting auxiliary units coming well, up now. Yeah. This is going to continue to grow up. This is going to continue to But hopefully every time. we'll also have the storm plan, too, to see what yeah. what other things. Yeah. But you're right, Johnny. It'll come, it'll come up again. It's going to come up again oh, and yeah. again. So we, we might as well address it saying, yes, okay, it's just what you said. It goes to the store, the, own, the homeowner. they got to mitigate it, and that's... Should be, and you guys are hands on with it to see that it, it's being done properly, so it keeps us off of it as much of being hands on on every single one, right? Yeah, okay. because ultimately it's going to come down to a lawsuit, right? If we don't do our job and we don't show due diligence in this, that we have really tried to take care of this situation, and somebody builds right. something and it's a problem, yeah. that lawsuit is something that's going to fall back on us to fight. And I just think we should do everything in our power to avoid that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so no offense do we want to make a motion? So what the motion would say, we approve this application with the, with the I can make a condition. Motion. Um, okay, you do that. <laughs> I make a motion. <laughs> um, I make a motion to approve the application with the following conditions. Um, condition one, that stormwater mitigation is presented to village staff, monitored by staff, and approved to, by staff for its effectiveness. Issue two, um, that the sanitary sewer be rerouted so that it's an individual sanitary sewer collector to the street, and that third, the meter and sanitary sewer, sewer go through the primary structure before it gets to the street. And then I would also think that we could um, ask the homeowner to verify that that site, that their property line stakes are within the alley or not. Where is that alley? How to say that? Is that not going to occur naturally with, in terms with of the setting the setbacks? Well, no, because right now they're dimensioning their accessory dwelling unit off of the property line that is dimensioned based on the GIS. They may, in fact, have 15 more feet of property back there that they don't even know about. You, can, you might be able to pull that accessory dwelling unit even further in the backyard than what's shown by this dimension plane. You might have 15 more feet of yard, that's what I'm saying. That's what it would indicate on the GIS. But if, if we show, you know, here's the thing. If we have, we have these pockets <coughs> of unvacated alleys, and if we're going to eliminate the alleys, we need to vacate those alleys and dedicate that as a utility easement. Stick with the. Uh, well, let's the let's record. throw that one. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's throw that one back on staff because yeah. I can I can find out whether or not that alley is vacated or not. That can bounce back to the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that's a whole right, different. Then take that one. So just the three. Yep. To approve it with the. 
And I, three recommendations. I didn't understand your third recommendation. The meter. Just the, the one that's already in there, which they already know about. So the you have metering to, is off of the primary is, dwelling. There is no second meter. Right. Right. Yeah. Correct. Sorry to say that. Which is already a, that's all, a that's given. A, Condition. Right. That's yeah. That's period. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I second that. No. Uh, uh, well, let's go back over those conditions just to be clear. <clears throat> Stormwater yeah. mitigation presented, approved, and monitored by staff. Sanitary sewer be separated from the neighbors. And that's it. We already have the condition that the metering. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we get. Danelle, Doden? Yes. Ready for the call? Yes. All right. Williams? Yes. Pilata? Yes. Danelle? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Doden? Yes. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> okay. Back on to the next one. supposed to be the easy one. Yeah. You haven't run screening yet, Chris. <laughs> I said you haven't run screening yet. <clears throat> okay, our second public hearing is a replat application from uh, Chris and Whitney West, Till to 12 West, West Central College. College, allowing for an uncommon lock College. configuration so yeah. of uh, so three skinny little lots. Now. <laughs> this is how he wants to do it. I'm at it A, B, A, and this would be B. Okay, are you ready? Yes. All right. <clears throat> so Chris wants to take three 25 foot frontage lots and replat them into two using the new uncommon lot configuration uh, text amendment that um, allows for a section of 20 feet. Um, he can do that because his total of 75 feet um, is, exceeds what, it, what he needs, which in residential uh, B, he has to have 50 feet of frontage. And with the 20 additional feet for the uncommon lot configuration, that's 70 feet, so he can, he can do that. The question then from that point becomes, how can he make sure that he has both the existing lot and the new lot meeting the uh, total square footage? And if you'll see in his um, Exhibit B 2, on pa page 2, that's, his existing lot, his existing three lots, shows where his house is, his garage, and on this larger property in the back. What he wants to do under Exhibit B, page 3, is to then run that 20 feet down um, about out of the 162 total, about 110 feet down, uh, and then go over. And he, and typically a garage only has to be 10 feet from a back property line. However, in order for the uh, exhibit A, number A lot, and to have enough square footage, it had to be um, set back 27.5 feet from that garage. So that, if he incorporates the 20 foot going down from the West Center College down to the back of the property, he also has over 6,000 square feet for Section B. Now the concern is, um, for him, is, is what he has as a footprint to build on is not, is pretty small. And so um, if you go to the zoning code and you, and if you would determine, if you would make that rectangle, if you just took that as a rectangle, 
the way the zoning code reads is that the smaller of the two line, lot lines is the, is the rear and front. Um, and then, and, but in this case, because it faces and the 20 feet is off of West Center College, we've never really said is everything then off, whatever comes off, that becomes the front regardless of what the, the uncommon lot ends up. We so never, we we never really said. discussed that. Yes. There, there isn't exactly a front. Oh. Oh, so, a um, and, and so what the question then becomes, can, if, if, <clears throat> if the West Center College becomes the front yard lot line, then can he build very close to that back lot line for the lot A? The lot A? Lot if, for example, um, if he had to, I mean, he has 20 feet of frontage here. If he had to go another 20 feet here and another 20 feet here, he'd literally have like 17 feet to build on. <laughs> so, um, but because this count, if this counts as his, if this counts as the front, then could he build closer to that lot line here, maybe between A and B, between A and B, like maybe giving a five foot setback or something, just just for any possible utilities or something off of the lot line, just giving him a little more, bit more area to build because no matter what. From that rear lot line, if this becomes the rear lot line, he needs to set back 20 feet from the rear. And if I'm sorry, what becomes the rear lot line? That's the dotted line you've the got going across? Southern. The southern. This. The far side. Got you. If you okay. go see where the B and the arrow, yeah, the Chris, bottom the, arrow. the bottom. Okay. Chris, yeah. can you show that? You have 33 feet to build. Like that. Gotcha. Thank you. Chris, do you want to? And there's a 20 foot setback from that, from the bottom. Maybe line. you can explain a little better. Sure. If you don't mind, if you can maybe lay, lay it out a little bit better than I am. I'm Chris Till. Hi, everybody. Hi. We have a really big yard. Who knows why? Anyway, we, we've got about over a quarter of an acre. Um, and it's three skinny lots. The former village planner said maybe they were originally planning on building townhouses, skinny townhouses in there or something. I don't know. There's nothing even built on this one right here. So there's 12,000, almost 12,200 square feet. There's enough for two 6,000 square foot lots. There's 75 foot frontage, so there's enough for 20 foot frontage. The, the big question is, is, what is the front lot line? And I mean, I've gone through the code backwards, forward, inside out. I met with Denise twice. It really doesn't define. We're sort of the uh, flag lot guinea pig <coughs> test case. You know, it's a case of first impression. What is the lot line? A, a reasonable argument could be made that it's the street. You know, the 20, well, you can't quite see it on there. I don't know if you can move that back. But the 20 feet on the street, street but if, if you read it, I mean, if, is that one? You know, the front lot line, in the case of an interior lot, which this is an interior lot, it's not a corner lot, it's not a through lot, the line separating the lot from the street right away is the front lot line. So that's 20 foot. So if that's the reading of it, that, you know, I'm going to stand over that right there. If we read it that this is, then I can do it right up to here. Well, that doesn't quite make sense. That doesn't seem to be good public policy. Um, is it the average? Did this should get averaged with this somehow or somewhere in there? There's a, uh, a piece of code that talks about the um, easements. If, 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 if I wanted to do this by an easement, which I could, it's a classic example. There's more than one way to skin a cat. I hate that saying, but there's lots of different ways to cut this thing up. If I did this by an easement, then I could kind of pick what my front lot line is, and I can say this is the front lot line. 
And I think you're all get, it, it doesn't really, you know, I'm into plain reading and statutory interpretation. It's <clears throat> nice to just go by the plain reading. And, um, so what is your proposal, yes. Chris? What would you say? Well, I don't know if it makes most sense to me as a business to say it's a problem outline, but I just don't see it in the code. So you can't. I really don't. I, 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 don't, you know, I mean, you can't. My, my proposal is I said, well, there's three ways of doing it. And however you, you guys think is the best, most reasonable interpretation. I mean, to do that, to do it as an access easement, then you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't own that driveway going up. Right. Yeah. The downside of that, I mean, easements are acceptable. They're legal. There's a long history of easements, right. but they're not preferable necessarily. That's why. I, for whoever is buying the property. Well, for anybody, line. it's yeah. just that things are a lot simpler when yeah. this is my yard. That's your yard. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be done with an easement. Um, but what we have is the code is written in a front lot line. It's the line separating the lot from the street right of way. Well, how about if we looked at the neighboring properties and sort of agreed upon uh, setbacks that, that adapted best to the neighboring properties? Yes, there is a piece, uh, code subset section that says if there's varying set front setbacks and it could be an average of the neighbor's yard I put that in now, my application. No, I didn't really mean that. I, I oh. meant I know that there was one neighbor who requested that the property The Bradford's behind there. Yeah. Uh, be 20 feet from I, and it's not clear to me which I, I don't know what well, there are these property people back here. Which property are they? Back here. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, okay, back so they're, they're the back yeah, backyard. They're, back. they're not to the I side. I like to do this with the obeying all setbacks and not asking for any setback exceptions. We have enough land to do it with 20 foot in the front and the back with 15 foot total on the side. It's just, what is the front? Thank you very much. Stop everyone. Yes. <laughs> what are the fronts of the other properties? <coughs> that you're adjoining adjacent to, or is that not relevant? Are they around the corner? Not really. The fronts, well, so we have Everything fronts here, over there. Right here. You know, that, that's his front. He actually owns these two right here. He's, he's kind of excited about this. <laughs> So one, so one option would be to say that the 20-foot frontage starts at Walnut Street and goes back 20 feet on your 25-foot. Thank gosh for not dealing with Walnut Street here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but Center, oh, um, Center College. Center College. Yeah. Sorry, 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 yeah. sorry. And then the back of your lot is what would normally be the back, so that would be a 20-foot frontage as well. And then the two sides can be what 10 and 5 or total of 15, total of 15. which means he could build a, a close or very close onto that lot line at the back no no well the, his he here. could build close to his existing his, his front i mean the back of, back his, of his front his existing yeah, yeah. yeah. The back of his front if this is considered the front lot line yeah how yeah. far do i have to be set back from from this right, right. newly well, it <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you know, yeah. 20 foot front setback, okay, you know, that means you can build right here. Well, that doesn't work. No. I mean, it wouldn't be so, uh, to, I mean, the fact that, the, the fact that the garage is set back 27 feet, I mean, it, it, typically garages can be built within, 10 feet, feet if they're if they're detached All right. so um, 
I mean, we haven't really, this is kind of testing this new. I, so what you're saying, Denise, is that, that they, this, these people, where we are now, there would be lots of space back there, even if it is built up to this line. Yes, line. that's what I'm it's saying. That's what I'm so saying. And, it, and then your neighbors on the other three sides would not, would, would not be affected in that they would still have the side lot lines and the rear yard of 20. But the neighbor to the bottom of the screen. Would have 20 feet. He'd, be, he'd have to be 20 feet away from them. Mm -hmm. right. and, that, and that's the neighbor who wrote the letter. Exactly. Yeah. Who wants 20 feet, right? Yeah. The other one. Yeah. Which is fine. If they want 20 feet. And 20 feet is the, is what, is the norm, right? That's yes. The, yeah, that's the yes. setback. So that's, yeah. so that's 20 what? foot in the front, 20 foot in the yep. back, 15 total on the sides, and then on the five. Well, maybe five. I think what? There's water going. I have come up with my own solution that <laughs> just really? works and it fits in the code. <laughs> I mean, it just makes sense to me. So. What is, what is your solution, Ted? Well, I was, you know, Denise brought up where I was at. I, if you take the existing garage, the existing, the existing accessory unit, and you go 10 feet off of the back of that to establish the front yard property line of mm -hmm. lot B. Yep, I get it. Then you take that dimension and it comes out to be 67 feet for that property. If you have then a 20 yard front yard setback from that new established property line and you have a 20 foot setback to the rear property line and a 10 foot setback for an accessory unit on that property, that constitutes the front and rear yards in harmony with all of the other front and rear yard definitions in the plat. So that you're saying these are five foot Lots. You're saying that thing to run. Yes. Essentially. Yeah. The problem with that is that it's now. Then his uh, lot. This is not 6,000 square feet anymore. Well, then I. Would be let 600. me keep going. Oh, well, <laughs> you're going to do this? Cutting that piece off. Well, then I took and I figured out where 6,000 square feet was on the front lot, and I came Eight. up with a side yard dimension of the access drive. At 12 feet okay and then to get the 20 foot I have an on the other side of that I have an 8 foot access easement <laughs> on that property a yeah. and that gets you oh. two 6,000 square foot lots with all the stuff I drew that one too I mean I've done a lot of them but yeah no I mean well, I, I did that again we could do that but then is an easement preferable and it's acceptable. Well, but why mean, are we creating an easement if we don't need one? You you need an easement so that the the if the person in lot A wants to build a fence, they can't go up to that what I would propose to be a 12 foot property line access easement. They keep the 20 feet. That's what the easement. Oh, I understand. I understand that it gives 20 foot road frontage. But why is why is that idea? It's fine with me. Again, more than one way to skin a cat. But why is that better than this that has no um, Well, in my mind, it was just a, it satisfied the most constraints of the code. Yeah. That, it is more you know, I looked at a bunch of different options, and mm -hmm. this one seemed to have the least issues. So that was the, the solution. Yeah. The, the one thing I will say about setback, you know, you have to consider the intent of the setback. and. Rear yard setbacks are important because as they're established in a plat, they give credence to why people have big backyards and why they should maintain backyards. And people don't like, a, you know, that's their private space. Sure. You know, just by human nature, that's their private space. So I really like to keep that rear yard setback maintained even in something like this. And the intent of this section of the code was to really allow very small structures being a part of a flag lot. So I think any way you want to skin your own cat on getting these, these dimensions done, and if it dictates that you do a small structure, that's good. Yeah, I mean, the plan is a 1,000, 1,200 square foot house. The plan is a small house anyway, yeah. so it's not. A I mean, I would think so, yeah. So, 
you know, within those setbacks to me, I had a basically a buildable area for a primary residence on lot B at 35 feet or 34 feet by whatever you wanted it to be width-wise. Right. So it worked out. I mean, you know, and I'm not suggesting I'm, you know, not sharing my drawings. I'm just telling you that I think that there's a solution here. It's not up to this board to come up with a solution for you as the applicant. It's your job to come to this board with this is what sure. I want to do, and we can say yay or nay sure. with conditions. Sure. Well, what do you? What is the front lot line then in your um, suggestion, which is great to me, and I've actually got that same suggestion drawn. Yeah, up I mean, I had from the rear property of lot A, I had a 20-foot front yard. But what is the front lot line? What's the front lot line? Oh, By the condition. The front lot line I had as a 12-foot property line wow. but an eight, eight foot easement to get so the twenty foot. The front lot line. That's yeah. The that or includes, it's an access easement. That includes an access easement. It becomes an access right. easement. Right. right. No matter right. what, it becomes an access easement. To get away from that front yard <laughs> minimum. Do we like I think that access easement could be fifteen foot that way. Do you like easements, Denise? Are we favor easements or no? That's clean for you. Um, I mean, the 12, the 12 feet, it was my understanding that we needed 15 feet for the essential services, so. That's why you have eight foot in addition to that. So. Here, pass that down. We have 20, we have 20, the 20 feet comes from the existing planning code and we didn't want to, you know, change that. So. If you reduce it down to 12 feet, that's lower, that 12 feet is lower than as far as making a, a lane. That's the, that goes against the code that we voted in as 15 feet. Um, unless we grant, unless we mandate an access easement in addition to that 12 feet. That's what I'm saying. So that property owner A has to designate an <coughs> eight foot access easement on that property in addition to the 12 foot that gets you your 20 this foot and that lane can run on the property line. He's saying put an easement right here That's and how I look bump at. the property line up. So, I'm sorry, but I, just to clarify, do you only need to know what's the front, front so that you can go draw what you want to draw and yeah, do what you want to do? One. Yeah. Or do you, I mean, because we are getting way into the weeds, and right. I'm wondering, do we need to go there? No. Or do you just need to know where the front is? If, if, if this is defined as the front lot line, which was my proposal, yeah. if this is defined as the front lot line, uh, you guys are, my, so then that means, can I build right up to here? Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's what I would sure. think. No, I don't think so. That, that oh, will, so, so, so what should I, how far back do I have to be? Well, that's where I go back to that 10 foot off of that excess, that garage, that existing garage would define the property line of lot B. But that, that's a different well, no, property. Different. Here. If I go, if, 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 my, if, if as proposed, how far back do I have to go from that? Because if that's the front lot line, then my setback is, you know, 20 feet from here. So I can no. go right up to there. No, this is two sided copies. Your setback would be you're, you're establishing a new property line along the width of the property to the access lane. And that 20 foot's an access lane. It's mm -hmm. not a lot. Because there's a minimum for the lot in the plat of 50 feet. So it doesn't have enough frontage to become a lot line in that definition. The lot line goes back to the back of the property in the width that you can get. And that's the width of that property. Well, the back lot line is defined as opposite the front lot line. And with the, with the changes that were made to the code, that a 20-foot frontage is allowed for a common lot configuration, whether it's done with an easement or I think the intent of that was to define the, the frontage necessary to create 
the access lane to the flag okay. lot. I don't think the intent was ever to be that that become the front yard. Yeah, that's the full 50 feet no. or whatever. He's saying it's the whole width of your property, so you have to drop down to where right that here. line is. Yes. yes. Where is that coming from the code? That's not in the code. So well, that that's what he's and saying as the interpretation street. that was the understanding, which is now we're working out when we have a real case. Yeah, I'm, that's fine. I'm the, I'm, I'm the In my mind, there's no scenario where the front lot line can be less than the minimum front the minimum width of the lot on the right of way. So the 20 foot, by definition, then becomes an access lane to a lot. Unless it's entirely done by an easement, then if it's done by an easement, it could be done. If it was entirely an easement, it could be read as that line, which actually, yeah, I yeah. mean, it, if this yeah. was entirely an easement, it could be read as that, which is the short line, yeah, the shorter line. Yeah, yeah, you could take your 20 foot front yard off of the side property line, right? And then there you go into this problem with the they could have five feet from the backyard lot line, which is, yeah, I mean, I have heard about that. I mean, it's yeah, I mean, this, uh, to me, I, I, I feel like if, you, if the 20 feet at the front is the, where we're recognizing the, the front lot line, and he obviously can't build, build that is going to end up being his driveway, then if we just say that at least it have to be five feet off of this front lot line here, yeah. That would work because, yeah. yeah, and with meeting all the other setbacks because there's 27 and a half feet on the other property, right. which really it could have just been 10. By your definition that he, can, he could literally build, if that's the front lot line, then that, but the beginning of the flag has no setback. Yeah, but you can't build right up to the edge of your lot line, can you? No. So if sure so, minimum is five. So if he at that top of B just had five feet, and then twenty feet at yeah five feet there, and then Why you'd have twenty feet at the oh. southern boundary, the back. That's great. Yeah, back one. And oh, well, it's really supposed to be three. Total feet of fifteen on still, either. You can still mm -hmm. build your driveway. 12 feet if you want, but it's I mean, have that 20 feet of frontage. Um, so that would allow a 28 by 60 footprint approximately, yeah, which is more than. So more. because there's 27 and a half feet, just to make, make this a little more complicated, um, and they only need, you only need to have 10 for that garage, why couldn't you just have a 17 and a half easement from property A given to you? I certainly could, but it seems just in the long run it's better to do things without easements. It just makes keeps everything a little bit more peaceful. But at I least mean, it's easements not are fine; they're acceptable, uh, yeah. but it's not preferred. Like, yeah, let's get it. Uh, right, right. I, but I can I do I can do it with if, an easement. If that if that is the interpretation <coughs> of that <coughs> twenty foot is the property line lot definition and it's under the 50 feet, then that second line parallel to the street has to also, yes, that setback has to match what's at the street, if that's the intent. Because we can't, we can't let everybody have to come in and say our front yard is 20 foot. You know, we can't cre let lots be created that are 20 foot wide with a front yard setback on something you cannot build on. That, that flies in the face of the intent of setbacks. Flies in the face of that. That's not the intent of zoning. Well, the intent of setbacks, besides drainage, as you talked about before, is to create a uniformity in neighborhoods, I thought, that people have. If you can't build to the front yard setback, you can't put a structure on it, then you can't call it that. It's an access lane. 
no matter how you cut it, it's an access lane, in my mind. Well, it, what, what do we want to do with this? I mean, I, I would be happy with just saying five feet at that northern boundary, but if we have to, I mean, I mean these, I mean these, like, these types of, of are, these types of situations are always going to come to the planning commission. Yes, because they are going to be unusual. So, um, so we have to clarify ultimately what we mean by the front line. Well, I think it goes to, you know, the idea that it's called a front lot line at 20 foot is the wrong definition. It's the, it's the frontage of an access lane to a flag lot. If it becomes an access lane to a flag lot, then it doesn't have any requirements relative to setbacks. The setbacks apply to when you get to the flag, not the pole. But that, that gives an advantage to people that just do it by an easement, and why should there be statutorily an advantage given, given to people with easements? If it's done with an easement, entirely with an easement, then people can just basically pick where, where the front lot lies. I'd be interested in we've ha what other people on Planning Commission and Chris and Denise think. I mean, if everyone agrees with Ted, then Cole. If everyone doesn't, then. Well, I already ways. said what but, I thought. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it looks. I mean, I see what Ted's saying that you're it's smacking in the face of, of it. I get, I understand that. And, but you've got a unique situation. This is going to continually happen, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you're tweaking the system, you're beating the system, and it's not a. I don't have a problem with that. I think I, I see what what the, what the strategy is. It does smack at, at what, what zoning is saying, but when you're down at the bottom, you go, you kind of have a workable lot. And, and I'm not an easement person, because I just, when it comes time to sell, there's gonna be big issues. Yeah. I mean, when you come time to sell, and that person sells, there's gonna be problems. So it's just, it's just human nature that there's gonna be problems. So an easement's always a problem for me. Um, to keep it clean is better. This is what, what you were saying, Chris. I'd rather keep it clean. I don't know how my feelings are about which way we consider the front lot, the front line. So it seems like either we, in this, I mean, each case is going to be probably different, but either we go, in this case, go with what Ted is suggesting with the access easement, or we say, okay, in the case of flag lots, that top part, wide part does not have to be 20 feet. It can be, but it has to be a minimum of whatever, five feet or 10 feet or whatever. I don't think that I'm saying that that 20 foot has to be an easement. What I'm su suggesting yeah. is that that lane that is created by the 20 foot frontage is simply a mechanism to get back to. Yeah. It can be a part of the property. It doesn't have to be deeded as an easement. It's a part of the property. But it's and not really way. considered the front lot but line. Correct. Is what really you're saying. The front lot. Yes, right. That's my whole thing. The lot becomes what's in the flag. The lot is the flag, not right. the pole. So then you're saying that there needs to just be that invisible line that goes all the way across, and then that's what his <clears throat> footprint is, and that's what he has to build on. That's where it yeah. starts. Yeah. And 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 the front becomes what is. The closest well, I, to the street? I think then it goes to the theory that you create rear yard setbacks yeah. for the privacy zones of residences within that plat. So that would then say that your rear yard is your rear yard and your front yard would be parallel to the street. In all those cases. Okay, your front yards. And, and I'll go to, I'll say that too, because you know, it goes to the stormwater thing. You know, the five, the side yard setbacks are typically designed to be swales, to get stormwater down those swales. And I guess it could be in the front and rear yard setbacks, but you know, I just like the orientation and the privacy issues being maintained. Because that's intent of zoning. Mm -hmm. That's the intent of zoning. But still, regardless of what the front yard 
front lot line is, the front door of the house doesn't have to be. Mm -mm. The front door nope. can be. You can put it on the roof <coughs> with a ladder. I don't care. So then his footprint is going to be about, what, 17 feet wide? If he's got 57 feet and you're going to do 20 and 20? I think what we ought to do is we ought to clarify no. our interpretation of what that front yard line means and let Chris come back with a plan to his desire that meets those constraints to the best of his ability and bring it back to us. The, the, this board will clarify <laughs> the front lot line? Yes. I say that we change the definition of that front yard line to not be, let's see, how would it be phrased? It, it the 20 foot defines the minimum access lane in to any yeah. flag property yeah and setbacks are then applied to the flag portion of that lot that would clarify all the stuff that we're talking about i think okay well for me it's been eight months i mean that since i first came here proposing this but um yeah yeah, we can't be in a position to solve the problem. We can yeah. only clarify yeah. where, yeah. you know, and thank you for bringing it up. You know, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a misinterpretation, interpretation, right. and we need to clarify that. That's our job. Well, okay. I mean, I think it, it started with a desire to, to even address the whole flag lot situation to accommodate infill. And so council did that with the recommendation from planning. And now we've determined that we need further clarification to accomplish the goal of infill. And because I think that we would agree that that 20 foot piece was integral to the, the concept that we were trying to yes. accommodate. And what you're saying then, Ted, I think makes some sense conceptually at least was let's have those setbacks apply to the flag portion of the lot. And so let's take a look at that provide the clarity so that you don't have planning commission I won't use I won't, the words that are coming to mind are willy-nilly but I don't mean it that way but subjectively applying criteria to each application when we're trying to be as consistent as possible yes yeah and when we <clears throat> did these scenarios way back when they, they tended to be larger lots that I used as examples, so. Well, you know, I love the idea that, you know, you've got some of these lots around that you can combine mm -hmm. and put smaller structures in there. I mean, that's infill. I love it. You know, I want to do everything we can to continue that momentum. But, you know, to, it just, you know, I just go back to the simple intent and logic of codes, you know, zoning. And, you know, to me, that that 20 foot is not a, front property line it's it's the property line of an access lane to get to the lot that's just the way I see it the first method of statutory interpretation is not to go to the intent is to go to the plain reading of the code and the plain reading of the code is that the street is the front lot line yeah but the the intent drives why those sections were written of course it does but paramount is is the plain reading of it yeah and, I mean and, and as it is today I understand this, the code may change and it probably will because of this and I'm all for it you know, <laughs> actually but uh, the plain reading of it today is that that is the front lot line and so I like Marianne's idea of, of let's just vote on the five foot do a, a five foot build back five foot here and 20 feet back here and you know 15 feet on the side I mean, we can vote on it. Okay. Somebody wants to motion it. I won't. Okay, I'll move that we do that for this oh, lot. You can't say that. Do I get to vote? No, no, no. Oh, you got to well, get wait, a motion here. We also have somebody who's raising their hand. Okay, and let me explain no, something. So, no. if you approve this, 
then then do we want to come back and still we want to re clarify this so that it changes we have to change the the wording in the text amendment for future ones so that I, we don't I, have this problem well i don't know that you have to decide that tonight okay but we but, yeah we still have somebody wants to then speak. also you do need to open a public hearing so yes yeah. Now we're going to open the public hearing. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Uh, if anybody uh, wants to come forward and uh, speak about this application, please come on up and state your name. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Hassan Rahmanian. I own the property on the west side of uh, his property, and I'm totally confused. <laughs> so I really I can't ask an intelligent question tonight. And I was wondering if uh, uh, the neighboring property owners can meet, uh, at least to clarify. This is the inf information I just saw tonight. So I can't really make, uh, uh, in, in, uh, as I said, intelligent question. And I don't know whether that opportunity exists out outside public hearing to look at the details of the plans and Hopefully, collectively, we can make a better, better, better decision. As uh, I, I don't know, when we say front line, front line means uh, the, the West Center uh, uh, College. Your front yard. So, and I'm sorry, yeah. you you have to address the chair, yeah. and and yeah. then oh, the sorry. body will answer yeah. questions. That's just well, to clarify. I, I, said, I, I I'm really confused with all sure. these uh, yeah. drawings sure. and uh, without prior information. Uh, I went with Denise this morning to ask for more information, and uh, so I'm tonight. I'm having that information and can. So Any comments, a meaningful comments to this yes. conversation. But you, you didn't receive something, a notice? Just a letter uh, that. And he uh, came in today, and I showed him these plans that you are all seeing. But he. But we didn't really look at them in details as how. Well, you had as much time as you wanted, sir. I, I just, you said you would come to the meeting, so the, yeah. I thought you. We're okay and with what you have. Do you live on the corner house? The well, corner my house uh, Tully. is on Tully Street. The backyard, the his backyard. property is in the backyard of my uh, property. Oh, so you're back here. backed up to it. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. There? So you're, you face on Tully Street. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right there. Yeah, there. Our address is on Tully. Mm -hmm. I see. So I don't know if there, there, there is an opportunity for input uh, prior to formal public hearing. There isn't an opportunity for input except within the public hearing, but if you and your neighbors wanted to meet with Mr. Tilley on your own, that's something that different. That was what came to my mind. Yeah, that's that, something yeah. That outside of the village, yeah, for right. sure. Yeah, and I would suspect that Chris you'd be willing to So, Thank you. so, so right now, sir, uh, regardless of what we decide, I think his, your backyard would be the side yard of his new proposed yard, just as it right. is, yeah, and right, and right. so the yeah, act, right. so the, um, what do you call it, the, would be ten to, it, the a building could be built up to ten feet from that back from that side yard. Or From even five. Fence, yeah. Yeah. Or five. five or a minimum of five yeah. feet. So if, if we have opportunity to <coughs> talk about this, uh, I, I would appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other public comments? Right? Close the public hearing. So, did you want to make a motion? Okay, yeah, I'll make a motion that we accept the 
a lot configuration as um, is in this packet and that um, we make the setback for the um, northern part of the flag part uh, at a minimum of five feet with the backyard being the 20 foot at, uh, and the two sides being a total of 15. And I have a question of clarity. Yes. If you apply a side yard setback to that proposed property line, then would not there have to be side yard setbacks on the 20 foot lane? This is for the building purpose. Setbacks aren't necessarily for building. If if you're gonna if you are well, there's gonna the be argument, a side yard setback regardless. We're establishing setbacks. Mm -hmm. If you're suggesting that we make that 20 foot frontage a front yard setback of 20 feet, it can't be 20 feet from property line to property line, it has to touch and ease a setback on both sides. So there's got to be a 15 foot setback rule on that lane if it becomes the lot with a frontage. It does. You're saying that the 20 foot pole, we'll call it the pole, yes. has to have a um, 15 foot yes. total setback? From the and that includes, so you couldn't put a driveway on there? Yeah, you can put a driveway on a side yard setback. You'd so have then to what's move, the problem? Have, on this diagram, you'd have to move oh, the, the setback to the left 15 feet. I mean, you have to, you know, you have to think about a buildable area with, it, with a completed line. You can't run a setback from a property line to a property line or dissect that to another portion. It, it, there isn't any logic there. So by if that's the argument that you want to create that 20 foot, it's the front yard of a flag lot, then it has to also have side yard setbacks to connect to the front yard setback. Yeah. So, so that should be a part of your proposal. So if you're establishing setbacks, then so specifying a 15 foot setback. Yes. Yeah. On the setback. eastern side here. So you're going to have well. setbacks now. For construction oh. purposes. Yeah. Yeah. We draw a sketch. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be 15 foot. It could be 5 or 10. It's got to be a total of con an accumulation of 15 feet. Y'all lost in here. Whatever. I'm confused. So Okay, so there's a motion. Uh, did, did you finish your motion? Yeah. Uh, so you said yeah, accept, accept the drawing as on, uh, exhibit B, page three. Yeah. With the northern Whatever setback this is, I don't know what that is. from this line of five feet. Yes. And the issue of setbacks within that 20 foot. Poll is going to happen yeah. regardless so, yeah, right. of how let's, we let's, do it. So. so that when we go back to this and rewrite that section, we can show the absurdity of creating no, no, no. Yeah. a buildable area. What are you? Yeah. you yeah. 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 Let us know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, he, so what, were you, what was that? He was just looking at what I meant oh, okay. by showing the. Oh, the 15 setback. feet. This is Ted's proposal. So this did you understand what Ted said? Yeah. Ted is saying. Oh, yeah. He wants on the pole, a, set, a side setback. A, a side setback of 15 right. feet on the pole. <laughs> but wait, isn't that. But it's just I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, here's my confusion. We, you asked to a clarification as to what was, the, what was your front yard here. And I'm hearing two, I think I'm hearing two different things. I'm hearing Mary Ann say, your front yard is the northern part of lot B, it's the, it's the right? Eastern. But then, but Ted is saying that alley, that driveway thing just became your front yard for lot B. Is that what I'm hearing Ted saying? 
Because we're getting real confused over here because I think we're hearing two different okay. things with two different sets of setbacks. Judy, it's important, I think, to have the terms correct. It's right. not front yard, it's front lot line. Front lot, front lot line. Just, just to be clear, it's front lot line. Right. Front yard sort of has a vernacular meaning. Chairs, right. tables, got it. Line. And so if that's the front lot line, then, and, and so that's what you're I was saying that, that, that the lot street, lot. So sure that, that 20 foot, a five foot, you know, seven foot house. Right. Little, little. I'm trying to define the constraints of what front yard, side yard, and rear yard lines are based on the lot configuration. Okay, so where that 20 foot hits the street, back 20 feet, that would be that would be considered the front lot line, and then there could be a on the left, on the east, west side, a five foot east, uh, what do you call it? Setback. Sorry, setback. setback. It goes down south, then turns and goes across horizontally or to the west. And then on the east side, along that uh, long strip, there'd be the uh, 10 foot setback that would run all the way back to the property. And at the southern edge of the property, there would be 20 foot uh, setback. But hold up. So you're shaking your head. But is that because you're talking about a different interpretation of where the front yes. lot line is? So yes. we need to vote on Marion's motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, but I'm not, I'm still really confused. So can you just make that motion one more time? Okay. Looking at the picture in front of us, <laughs> I am uh, accepting his drawing as he shows it. Okay. And then the, the setbacks on the eastern side from the street to the back of the property would be 10 feet going along there on the eastern side all the way to the back, well, to the, till we get the backyard setback. On the west side of the pole, there'd be a five-foot setback that would run south and then turn and run west to the western edge of that property B. Then on the west side of property B, there would be a five-foot setback. On the southern part of property B, which would be the backyard, there'd be a 20-foot setback. That's what I'm making a motion to accept. Okay. You got that? I got that. Yeah. Is there a second on that? No, of course, I'd have to have someone second the motion. Yeah, yeah. If I have no second, then we're, it's that death. Makes, that makes sense. Do you, do, would, do you need visual aids? Yes. Is everyone <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey. Hey, Mary Ann, when you were coming down the five foot, when you're coming down the five foot strip, coming down the five foot strip, everybody here. Yep. 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 And then turn there. Five feet. Ten feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense to me. I mean, it does make sense. Here's the 20, 20 feet. I think these are 10. These are five. Yeah, here's the 20 feet. 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 Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so and so this now becomes okay. the sides, okay. and then because it's uncommon, the side kind of goes like that. And the side goes over here. And 10 feet. Five feet. This is 10 feet. Five feet. This one's 10 feet. And you're following this. So we're not making the parcel anymore. No, the exactly. parcel is the same size. Okay. Just, just yeah. Yeah. determining yeah. the set. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get clear. This is where we yeah. need. We're going to need a fresh one. Yeah. We're going to be able to draw on it. Well, I think we just show the drawing. <coughs> just do it. Okay, so she's certain where it is. Why don't you draw mm -hmm. it on here, sir? Well, I already have Ted's on here, which makes it. Oh, I'll well, draw it on mine. Okay. <laughs> so these are five feet. Then it's just five feet. Okay. So the front yard would be five feet. We 
pretend that the, that the southern end of parcel A is the street, which is kind of what we're imagining. Right, right there. there. This is a so, oh, it's right this, the who, who wants to see this? So, there would be. So, we're going to imagine that this is the street because it's going to start with a flag. And then. Ten foot setback. Right. Mm -hmm. five so foot with the with the what well, we're just going to put setback. Mm -hmm. The ten foot mm -hmm. stands there. Five foot Flat. setback here. Mm -hmm. Five foot setback mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Originally. Mm -hmm. So then, if the flag, if the body of the flag becomes yeah. a new parcel, the and the this line is the street, yeah. then it's only you five feet. Not within three feet. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Flag. The driveway can be bigger. Within setback or requirements. Because there's no building there. As it's so what's this piece well, right here? So that's five, five feet. feet. Five feet. Five feet. Five it's a five feet. Five feet. Five feet. Five feet. Five feet. Back oh, back. It's oh, okay, because it's 20 feet. So you're 20 feet right here. Because we're yeah. making 15 so feet. The driveway is going to be 15 it's feet wide. It's going to be 20 feet, but there's going to be five feet of setback. Because it's 25 feet across. It's going to be, no, it's going to be 20 feet. So, and all of and all of these setbacks are consistent. The setbacks, are, the setbacks are unimportant here because with the driveway, there's no building. I think that's what Ted was saying. So you can have against three feet. So he's going to get a new legal description. That's saying this should be ten foot. He'll have to have a flag. Flag property. For he, when he goes to replat, yeah, he hasn't done that yet. That's why he was here tonight to talk. Huh? And you're working the So what's the setback here? You have to get it. He has to come and get to me with the flag. That's not the setback. So what's the setback there? Five foot well, setback there. Twenty here. Yeah. And then no yeah. setback. So we don't have to worry about the setback here. The most is twenty feet counts as setback already. That's not going to prove it. Okay. Because, yeah, if you try to solve it with an easement and then when you sell it, it's like, I'm not going to grant the easement if you're going to And then you have a landlocked parcel. Right. Because it's an uncommon lot. And the driveway really can be within three feet. I mean, of any, because there's no building there. So who cares? It's a setback, but it's not going to be. You can still put yeah. gravel down. I'm going to recommend another motion on the table. I recommend that we, that, that we get a new drawing that's I'm going to keep going. I'm going to hell. I won't throw you in. I'm sorry. Someone needs to make a decision. I'm almost done. I'm sorry. I know. Is there a water issue here? I, I, I think. Frank, there's a motion that has no, to be addressed. There's a fundamental. He's here to. Uh, but the motion has not received a second yet, has it? No. So uh, I think the consensus is that we need to get a new drawing that reflects what we've been talking about. Uh, so that we can be much clearer in terms of what it is we're actually approving. And that will probably, uh, you know, the replatting will necessitate getting it resurveyed. Well, it'll need to be to get, legal, but I think that, that yeah. what we can deal with at the staff level, we'll get a new drawing based upon the conversations. Right. Denise can deal with it at the staff level, work with the applicant, right. and then when we come back, I expect that we'll have a far more orderly yeah. meeting. Yes. <laughs> Not to say that it wasn't a valid no. <laughs> discourse of that <laughs> and what the code says or doesn't say, but it's highlighted as an area we have to address. So was everybody in agreement with the, the motion that was made? Because there's a motion there out no there. Second. There was no second. No. no. So it fails okay. for lack of second. No. Okay. All right. So okay. know, we're finished for tonight. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. You want that? Well, no decision was made. <laughs> yeah. I would you make a, a request that the, Why should was there an application actually pending before? Yeah. Yes. Would, you, would you make a request know, to table the motion or to submit another drawing, we're please? Come back and we're going to have to present these things. I'd like to propose that we table my current application for further clarification and I'll come back. Yeah. You guys meeting in February? Yes. 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 If somebody I'll make that motion that we table. Second. But all those in favor of tabling it, say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Really now, on to uh, 
old business, the infrastructure Q&A. Thank you. In the future, we might consider having staff when we have this kind of thing first. Yeah, I didn't think this was going to go that yeah, long. Well, but <laughs> you never know. I know. Yeah. No. Okay. How you doing? Yeah, I hear it. <laughs> so, Johnny, everybody got your flash drive? And it had your... Mary Ann's seen it before. Oh, you've seen it um, before, though. But you should have gotten it. It's the presentation. There's a flash drive in your packet. Really? And I have to admit that I did not find the flash drive until ah. tonight. And I, I didn't you guys got to read it those emails I send along. Because yeah, it I mean, it was detailed. Very, very important flash drive. Flash drive. Huh? I say we table it until we come back. After let them look at all of the information that we proposed. But th that's going to be the most because if they look at it, then they can have their questions ready. Did anybody get a chance to look at it? Did anybody? Yeah. You did? Mm -hmm. Anybody did else? No. Ted, Ted you did not. I, I ha we, you talked with, I don't know if it's all of council or Brian or any, anyway, I have gone through it, but not that I remember it. But, right. but I think it's important enough and big enough that it's not something we should be doing at 9 o'clock or late. I think it's something we should do at the beginning of our meeting while we're fresh. Would there ever be a time when people could meet during the day? Separately, can we maybe do something, Johnny, mm -hmm. with you during regular um, staff hours? Yeah. And funny you should say that, because <laughs> we're talking about that retreat thing, and perhaps the front end of that retreat could be because it's going to inform a lot of what you talk about in the course of that retreat. That the front end of that could be uh, during the day could involve Johnny. And I think the emphasis for our board should be on infrastructure issues. You know, not building issues, right? I mean, we, we really don't yes. care if the pool building's falling down, but we care that the lot's taken care of, I guess. But So I think that, you know, when we review it, we should focus our attention on the issues relative to planning and what affects our board not go into, you know, the, I'm sure, all the conditions of all those buildings and whatnot. It's mm. pretty intense. So the sewer, the water, the streets, the, the parks, alleys. Parks. Parks. Any, any village owned property. The land and what's under it is what we're concerned with. Well, that's the land and what's. Parking. Yeah, parking's in your report. <coughs> Absolutely. I'm good. So storm, okay, so storm water and you're in the process of that, getting that we going? We are in the process of that. Um, storm water is going to be a big issue. Uh, I'll just say a little bit. The infill is going to be a big issue. We already have a problem, and by doing all this infill, you're going to create even a bigger problem. That's the reason why. I felt it necessary to bring it to your guys' attention for that property because this is the first one that's going to start trickling down and we start getting 20 and 30 and 40 of these and then trickling. somebody's going to say, why didn't they bring it to our attention? Right. Right. So we brought it to your attention and beat it to death. But we got it done. So, oh, um, I think that's important. I mean, it's yeah. been critical that you do that. So, no. so we would like to do this possibly in daytime hours, um, separate from a regular meeting, just coming in just to talk to you about the infrastructure. I don't know what your schedule's like. The reason I would like to do it sooner than later is because there are a lot of things, as you know, that are coming down the pike for us, and I don't want Planning Commission to be I want Planning Commission to have the information before they start looking at all this stuff. We want to try and set it soon. Uh, I think Johnny should be able to go because uh, we're going to plan. I mean, we need I to know when he's available. From you, but I can coordinate with Johnny when I'm. 
Okay. Tomorrow I can do that some other time. All right. Okay. Great. Thank Sounds you. good. Thank Thanks. you. Sorry, everybody. Sorry so for long. that. Thanks, Johnny. Really We're sorry. Anyway. Okay. So. Um. Can we do that? Set something up. Let me go grab my. So, uh, for a day, we're talking about some time for a daytime meeting? Yes. Is that just for infrastructure, or is that also just going to be. That's just for the Johnny's report. Okay. How much should we allow? Do you think an hour? Or I would say an hour and a half, half, maybe. Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Yeah. Hour and a half to two. I think we spent three hours with them, but he's probably got it down. He's taking out all the buildings issues. That's yeah. Yeah. He's gonna yeah. yeah. So an hour. Well, and also, no one had seen, <clears throat> no one had seen the information at the point that he was reporting. If you guys do go through that information ahead of time and, and have targeted questions, I think you can cut a lot of. He will not need to present as fully, um, he can just highlight and then you can go with questions. So I think you can cut that down to an hour. Yeah, if you allow an hour and a half, you're going to be solid. <clears throat> so, um, any, anything, Anything still in January? Close by, uh, if, if particularly if it's like an afternoon, I could, I could be either this Tuesday, this Thursday, or next Tuesday, or next Thursday. What is the uh, Tuesday the twenty second? No, thank you. <laughs> so the twenty fourth. I I can't do it on the twenty. I can't do it any Thursday. Any Thursday? How about the yeah. 29th? I won't be here. Okay, so now we're going into. Now I have met them. Well, February. You know, and, and for that matter, I mean, those would be days when I don't have an afternoon class. But if we need to go to a day when I do have an afternoon class, my school will just have to get a substitute for me. Okay. So, you know, that, that will be did, fine. Did we say the 22nd was right. out? Well, I, that's really tight, tight in terms of the notice and everything else. Oh, right, 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 council right. Meeting that night, so it's okay. Yeah. All right. So um, now we're into February. Okay. Unless we look at like the thirtieth. Uh, no. That, no, I'm now? I'm gone the 29th and thirtieth. Okay. What? Okay. So now we're looking at um, February. So the fifth. What was it? The dates? The fifth or the seventh? That you can't or can't? That, or that was in January. So, no okay. Anybody? February. Fifth was fine. Yeah. February fifth um, at <coughs> morning or afternoon? I think for Frank, afternoon. For me. Afternoon. Yeah. Afternoon for me also. I'm in Columbus. One o'clock. Okay. Yeah. One o'clock would work. One p.m. February fifth. Meet with Johnny. Okay. All now, right. Is that for the meeting or the retreat? Because no. if we add another hour and a half onto that, you you retreat for you had asked to schedule a planning commission retreat to define your goals for 2019 and to get clear about all what's right. coming on your agenda because you got things flying all over the place. You've got ATP, you got comp plan, you got it, it's not narrowed down and you had asked me to set a date for a retreat and I didn't want to do that until you had your bless you new folks aboard, you got your new folks aboard, so you want to uh, extend the meeting to do sort of goals, goals. planning? I don't know why not. Yeah, that's like as long as we're there. One become the work yeah. Of yeah, one to four. Yeah, and Johnny will go first. Yep. And then, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give him that. <laughs> Mario, <quit>. Poor guy. <laughs> but when he walks in, we're going to tell him we'll squeeze him in near the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're such a dude. 
<laughs> and while um, I'm, we're getting a little bit off track here, but I wanted to also, since we're talking about yep. schedules, can we go ahead and talk about um, the fact that Susan will be not be here for the next couple months. She leaves. She's a snowbird. And um, so Dino turned in dates that he is going to be on vacation, and they fall during the planning commission meetings, and so he's wondering if maybe the February, March, April planning commission meetings could be changed because otherwise if she's out and he's out of the alternate, we're really, and, and we've got one, K, one uh, public hearing in which Ted's going to be recusing, so we're not going to have anybody left. So. Do we want to look at a possible another date? Um, he is av not available th the 6th through the 12th. I'm so back the 12th, so if we could do it, I could do the 12th at night. I could do it, I could do it the, at night. I'm back in the afternoon. 12th of February? Yep. That's so what I come instead of doing the 11th, do it on the 12th of February? Oh, wait, is that the one that Ted will have to recuse for? Yes. Okay. Is there anything on Tuesday the 12th with any well, other committees? Well, whatever meetings you've got happening normally, we'd have to move them, but it, that could happen. We could book another room. I don't think there's anything on Tuesdays. I don't. Uh, Energy board. Nope, sorry, that's Thursday. They, used to be they, they don't Cowboys. exist okay, anymore. Okay, so they're not. Okay, yeah. so we're Tuesdays is good. Okay, so 7 p.m., Tuesday the 12th. Let me ask a question about that. Um, I'm going to be recusing myself, but the um, applicant is working diligently to free people up for the 11th as the meeting date, and changing that is going to mess that up. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, well, it's going to mess it up more if you don't have a quorum. Well, you will have a quorum, but it does bring a lot of pressure to bear because so you have, have to have a three-person three vote, and that is not a great position for folks to have to be in. It's, a, well, I mean, it's, I mean, it is what it is, but it's not comfortable. I mean, it's obviously the 12 has to work. Yeah. Well, couldn't we hold both right now and get, I mean, Do what? Well, I hold the 11th and the 12th. I, I mean, let the applicant know that we're considering the 12th and see if they can change. I can certainly discuss that tomorrow morning. Do you have any other hearing meetings for February? Uh, not right now, no. No one's come forward for anything else. So, so that's, I mean, that's. That's useful helpful. because then it can helpful. be directed to that other date if that works. All right, so yeah, get back with us on that. It'll be either February 11th or February 12th. But we need to know soon because I have to get notices out 20 days ahead for people um, because it is a rezoning, possibly. Possibly. Okay, and then the 6th to the 12th of March, you said you'll be back on the 12th? Same thing. Be back on the 12th, yep. Yeah. So let's tentatively do planning commission on 7 p.m. But wait, will Ted, will Ted have to recuse on that? I don't know if Ted will be at that meeting. I mean, I don't think so. If he, because Ted does not have to recuse for that we meeting. We can stay with the people. meeting. You're, you're fine. For oh, the yeah, meeting. okay. Just stay on the 11th. Stay on the 11th, okay. And then, um, yeah. Okay. I don't know. you have anything else coming at us, Ted? Well, I guess we'll just have to revisit it at that point. Yeah, because you're, yeah. I mean, you're, yeah, we're fine. It's okay, and you get okay. Styles back, I believe. Then. Yeah, by then I have Styles back. Okay. Denise, did you need a quick okay on your planning and zoning report? Yeah, did everybody? No, then you want to move that down to new business, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, nothing else on old business? No. So, new business, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, we did have the comp plan. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we are, what, where we've not done anything with that more that, then no, that's what, but that's one of the things you brought up as needing to discuss for your retreat because yeah. so you've now been do, funded we for can just consultants. talk about it at the retreat yeah. then. Okay. We wanted to talk about the report. 
would you, since you were involved in that, do you want to come up with a little strategy of how we yeah, move forward on that? Sure you and Deb. Yeah. Okay. And then um, planning and zoning draft annual report. This has to go into um, council's packet. They wanted it for January 22nd. Um, so typically planning and zoning uh, makes a date to go and present their annual report. Um, the fact that they want it in the 22nd um, makes me wonder if someone wants to come and represent planning and zoning and can kind of do an overview to council if they want, or do you want to just not do it this year and let it, just let me do it? Well, it we used to, I swear it ran, it ran Matt Reed right off planning commission. He hated it so much. He hated giving that annual report. <laughs> And it seemed to be April when he would do it. He would like push, push, push it. But they were like wanting him this year in January. So. Frank, would you like to do that? I, I can do it. When when would I be doing this? Next Monday. 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 Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. That's right. It's a Tuesday. And is there anything within the planning and zoning report that you feel needs to be changed or uh, added? I'll have to read. I you know, okay. went through it rather quickly. But let, just send to. those amendments to me right. if you need me to do that. I'll do it. And that's. Um, you said, what's the date on that again? Next Tuesday? Next uh, Tuesday, because we're closed for Martin Luther King Day next Monday. So. Oh, I have a Tuesday. question to jump back to this. Um, meeting on yes, the 11th if we push that meeting off to the 12th are we going to have a problem with notifications to put this on planning or on council's agenda for their next meeting uh, um wait when you say their next meeting what would you mean by well, that? we have 30 days to get it to them so um, yeah i mean it's, it's certainly not going to go to council's meeting on the the 18th or 19th, do we do President's Day? I can't remember. 19th, I think. Um, because, well, unless you don't, I mean, minutes are not going to be anything but a draft. Yeah, when it's going to have to kick back to the, the meeting after that because <laughs> of the, the uh, requirement for neighbor no notification is different. Instead of 10 days, it's 20. Only for rezoning. I know. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. <coughs> um. Well, that didn't carry. Well, um, I'm thinking back of this, the report that gets made. I, I also think that a report is good to be looking forward, and and it seems like today we've ran it we've run into some of the kind of issues. So maybe at least you'd have a statement of you know the fact that we have. Are in allowing increased density now. We we know that we're going to be looking at issues that come up in regard to that. That would be. I mean, I, this is a very thorough report. I yeah, I mean, because it, it technically you do look back, and when it's an annual report, so I put all those text amendments in there. Um, I can take a look at it. All right. Okay, so that's it for me. Okay, no other new business. Uh, we're next on to nomination of chair, nomination of vice chair. This one that's mm. for the year. I motion that we keep them the way they are, whoever vice chair is. Do we have a we vice, have chair? vice chair? Right now. Well, I, I nominate uh, Frank here for chair. Second. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I, I can't, can't vote. Can't vote. You're just nominating. It's okay. okay. Vote, can't vote till the next time. Oh, okay. Uh, nominations for vice chair. Or are there any other nominations for chair? Who? I'm sorry. Who seconded that? Williams. Oh, it was Williams. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> any other nominations for chair, please? <laughs> uh, nominations for well, vice you chair. You can make one, Frank. Who is vice chair? Yeah, Frank and <clears throat> is Susan who, vice chair? Who was vice chair? Susan. Frank was. Was it Susan? Because Rose was chair, right? Yeah, oh, that's right. Out. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was vice chair. Yeah, you're right. We have a vice chair. Congratulations. I thought Susan was. She's chair. I've been here. 
I don't think she wanted to do it anymore. That's well, she kind of oh, got Rose Frank to do it. Chair, and well, she's not here, vice so chair, I just nominate Susan for vice chair. Vice Susan for vice chair. Vice, Susan for vice chair. <laughs> This is a whole new day. We don't have to base anything on the past. Move forward. Okay, I'll second that nomination. So who, you so nominated not gonna like Tom? that. Susan. Did you not? I'm sorry, who nominated? She is not going to be happy. Okay. Uh, and then the um, other thing under agenda planning, you mentioned something about we have to talk about transit guest lodging again, so we should put that on there officially as planning? Well, it's going to come to council, and then council, I think, would probably refer it to planning commission. So I don't know if you need to put it on the agenda yet. It's a, it's a potential future item. Yeah, potential. Conception has not occurred on that item. Okay. Thank you, Paul. I think we've reached the point. Uh, a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, we moved and seconded the adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> Thank you all very much for your patience. Did, did you vote on the chair? You don't. No.